A festive atmosphere unfolded in Madrid, the capital of Spain. It coincided with Real Madrid celebrating their 36th La Liga championship in their history. Tens of thousands, no, actually hundreds of thousands of people joined the parade led by an open-top bus, on top of which was the championship trophy, along with its owner, the Royal Spanish team. The crowd grew from the main headquarters of Madrid at Puerta del Sol, then circled around the city center and city hall before reaching the nearby Sabele Square, where the crowd reached its peak. They sang, celebrated, and took commemorative photos on the open-top bus. The players also had a chance to have fun. For Jude Bellingham, he enjoyed the first championship of his football career. Captain Nacho Fernandez told Real Madrid TV, We had to come to Cibeles because we won a very hard-fought championship. We are very happy. You have to enjoy this moment because you never know when you will win again. The atmosphere at Cibeles gave us goosebumps. I have dreamed of this all year. Tony Cruz also couldn't hold back his emotions and shared, We had a spectacular season. We faced difficulties. Despite many injuries, winning the championship early and with a leading position says a lot about this team. It is important to celebrate with the fans before heading into the Champions League semi-final second leg. Carlo Ancelotti's team easily defeated Cadiz 3-0 to clinch the title with four rounds to spare. The championship was joyful, and the joy multiplied as they regained the top spot from their arch-rival Barca. With only three rounds left in the season, Real Madrid led with 90 points. The most impressive thing is that throughout the campaign, they lost only one match. Los Blancos' championship was even more convincing as they had the best offense and defense in La Liga. On the attacking front, the Bernabeu team scored 78 goals. Jude Bellingham, Vinicius, and Rodrigo each contributed more than 10 goals. The most outstanding was Bellingham, leading Real's scoring chart with 18 goals. On the defensive front, despite many key players being absent, Real still proudly became the team with the fewest goals conceded in La Liga. Since the start of the season, Carlo Ancelotti's squad has conceded only 22 goals, the fewest in the league. Out of 35 matches played, Los Blancos kept 19 clean sheets, more than half. Additionally, this season at home, Real Madrid has never lost a match. Indeed, their solid defense was the cornerstone that helped Real achieve a series of proud accomplishments. The most typical example is when they used a solid defensive strategy to defeat Man City in a penalty shootout. Real's championship opportunity also partly came from the weakening of their opponents, such as Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. The chasing situation was continuously created by coach Xavi's team. The turning point occurred right in the El Clasico match, when Real came from behind to beat Barca 2-1, creating a points advantage in the standings. Following that was a slump period when Barca lost to Girona and Villa. The points gap gradually widened, and in the end, Barca's defeat in the second leg handed the cup to their opponent. As for Atletico Madrid, things were not much better. This season, the biggest surprise was that the team competing for the top spot with Real was not one of the two aforementioned giants, but a newly promoted team for two seasons, Girona. However, Michel's squad was flourishing, but when they faced Real, they failed. In the first leg at Girona's home, Real easily won 3-0. The second leg, was even easier as Los Blancos had a crushing 4-0 victory over Man City's junior team. That was a day when the attacking trio of Bellingham, Vinicius, and Rodrigo played extremely brilliantly. There were plenty of favorable conditions for Real to march towards the finish line, but things weren't always smooth for Real Madrid, and of course, there were difficult periods they had to overcome. For example, Early in the season, they continuously received bad news when goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois and centre-back Aidan Militao suffered serious injuries, forcing them to take long breaks. Particularly, losing Courtois forced Real to recruit a new goalkeeper, Kepa from Chelsea, as at that time, Real had only one goalkeeper left, Lunin. Many thought Ancelotti would continue to recruit a new centre-back since only Alaba, Rudiger and Nacho could play in that role. But no, 
the Italian coach decided to rotate those three players with each other, even though Real wasn't short of money. But Ancelotti felt he could still manage with the team's current personnel. Not to mention, throughout various periods of the season, Real Madrid continuously lost players due to injuries or suspensions, especially losing Alaba for the rest of the season. Once again, many thought Perez would have to spend money to help the team overcome difficulties, but Ancelotti again said no to buying players. If the best players were lost, he would experiment with players in new roles. For example, last season, he moved Kamavinga to play left-back, and it was a great success. During the period when Alaba and Rudiger were injured, Ancelotti even used the centre-back duo of Kamavinga and Chuameni. Though this was only a temporary method, the results were still quite good as Real continued to achieve good results. Part of their squad consists of talents who know how to shine at the right time to help the club overcome adversities. For example, Jude Bellingham. Although he had just joined Real Madrid less than a year ago, the English midfielder immediately showed his important role by continuously securing three points for the Royal team. Early in the season was when Bellingham shone the brightest, constantly scoring in the injury time of the second half to bring victory to the team, even though they didn't play very well throughout the match. Speaking of this, it must be acknowledged that there were many matches this season where Real Madrid didn't play at 100% of their performance. Typically, Vinicius, when the Brazilian player had an unsatisfactory start, but as the season progressed, Vinny showed his influence with continuous goals. Early match expectations, mid-match disappointment, and late-match joy of victory were the common feelings of most fans this season. It's understandable when the personnel this season were not adequate to allow them to impose their will in all matches. But regardless, victory still belonged to Los Blancos. On the day they lifted their 36th La Liga title, President Perez declared, the 36th championship is a title won after a series of difficulties. History obliges us to keep winning, and the other day, we had another magical night at the Bernabeu. Soon, we will give everything to win the 15th Champions League. The Spanish billionaire also admitted that Real Madrid had a challenging season both on and off the pitch, but through the talent, unity, and solidarity of the players, until now, Real has not deviated from the development trajectory towards the future of the team and the new Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. With just one Champions League final against Dortmund left, Real Madrid will conclude this season relatively perfectly. They have La Liga and the Spanish Super Cup already. The Silver Cup is the remaining title for coach Carlo Ancelotti's team to conquer. And, with what has been shown throughout this period, up to 70% of fans say that Real Madrid will be crowned champions. Looking back at history, since the tournament was renamed UEFA Champions League, Real has played a total of eight finals and won all eight. So many believe that Real will maintain a 100% winning record in the final match of the season. Winning the Champions League, winning La Liga, and bringing in Kylian Mbappe, that's a very bright prospect that any Madridista would want. They crave Mbappe just as they craved Ronaldo 15 years ago. The day CR7 came here, he was the best player in the world. Although Mbappe hasn't reached that level yet, his goal is definitely to rise to the level of his idol. Real Madrid without Mbappe is already terrifying. Imagine how frightening the royal team would be with the 2018 World Cup champion. There is also somewhat unfortunate news that Cruz and Modric might leave after this season ends. It is unknown whether that's true or not, but if it is, it would be sad to part with players who have contributed to the team's success over the past 10 years. But at the same time, it also declares that the Galacticos 2.0 era is coming to an end. Coming soon will be a completely new Galaxy version, talented and promising to create successes equal to or even greater than the previous version.